Hello there, Abundant Life family. Pastor Larry here on this Tuesday, uh, May the 18th for this 11-11. I'm so glad you're able to join me today. I want to take our attention today to Psalms chapter 40, and I want to read the first three verses. Scripture says this, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. I love that portion of scripture, and it talks about the significance of the impact of our lives as believers, really, of enjoying the presence of God. You know, last night, the boys and I uh, were sitting watching some television, and we got onto this series, um, and I'm sure you've seen it, um, Home Makeover, uh, Extreme Makeover Home Edition. And we sat there, and as they went through story, we watched a couple episodes, the two stories that we watched, we were practically in tears, right, as the people were given these beautiful homes, just free and clear, and at the end, uh, one community actually gave the land to a family that had been under persecution from uh, an African country and had come over here and had found asylum here. And as we looked at those stories and the one family where the, there was only one boy amongst all the women and he got his own little man cave for a bedroom and and we saw that and all me and the guys, we were just we were just about in tears, right? Those kind of things are pretty special, and we consider that a, a tremendous act of benevolence on behalf of those who gift it to someone. It's uh, very uncommon, and it's very rare that things like that happen. So when you see such extravagance given, it moves you. I wonder, do we feel the same way when somebody draws closer to Christ, when they come to him and receive salvation or are filled with his Holy Spirit? Do we have that same excitement and share the enthusiasm that we know is going on in heaven as believers? Because that, friends, is the most significant thing in the world. I'm grateful for the acts of benevolence that are given in this life, in this world. The church, Abundant Life, gives a lot, a lot of resources out and finance, financial aid and situations to people that find themselves in need. And it's a blessing and we, we feel good. We love to give to missions and bless our missionaries and those who minister um, through us and, and to us and for us in our behalf as we extend partnership with them. But reading this scripture here, the psalmist brings to bear that when he waited for the Lord, he experienced his presence. Once again, as we lead up to this Sunday, which is Pentecost Sunday, experiencing the presence of God is really the solution to everything. When we take time to wait on God and to have him invest into us and we sense his presence, we are more prompted to follow him and live out the victorious life that he has in mind for us. We make really the greatest impact in our Christian lives when we choose to wait on God. Our greatest impact comes through that waiting when we experience him. God is, the, this is our testimony, really of the reality of God to the people all around us. And by watching our steadfast faith in Christ, in him, they learn um, to trust what is trustworthy. They learned that trusting is in the Lord. Now, experiencing God is, is a powerful thing that every believer should do. And have you taken the opportunity to wait on God, to hear his voice by meditating on his word or, or just praying a prayer and saying, God, speak to me today? Starting every day with that thing in mind. I got to tell you, it is, there's no substitute for us. You know, we are always praying that God would send revival and into abundant life and to our church family. And we pray that in the sense that sometimes we think what revival is. We think that revival is many people being saved or, or uh, some display of a spiritual gift among the people. Maybe we anticipate there to be a word of wisdom or, or we expect to just a general excitement, you know, in, in a, in a worship setting. But friends, revival is is none of those things. Although I am grateful for people that come to Christ and for 
um, people who experience a touch of the Holy Spirit or or some physical manifestation as well. Uh, our response to God's goodness and his power is in some physical way. That's very exciting and it can be uh, and it can add enthusiasm and into a worship service. In fact, when we ex- worship the Lord together and we see those times and we we experience those together, I as a, as a worship leader, as someone part of the group, I, I often sense that rise in faith among the people, right? When there's that, that pushing, that pressing into the Lord and, and it, it encourages the rest of the people to enter in and, and the congregation and the gathering of believers is very important. That's what the church is about. And all those things are significant. But even as good as that is, that is not revival. Revival really is the overwhelming sense of God's presence that falls powerfully on a a Christian person, a faith-filled person, that have become very lethargic in our relationship and responses to the Holy Spirit. That's what revival is. Um, As Charles Finney wrote, revival is the inrush into uh, the inrush of the Holy Spirit into a body threatening to become a corpse. That's exactly what that is. And when the psalm says he waits patiently on the Lord, he is being a counteract uh, thing to that. He He's doing what's opposite to being lethargic. He is being involved and listening to the voice of God. So when we pray for revival, we're not just looking for people to come to be saved. Oh, we long for that. And I that is the predominant thing. But revival needs to begin with us, the church, where we recognize that we have become a little complacent in our spirituality. Um, another thing that revival is, is receiving the elements of the Christian life that God intended to be normal for his church. The elements of the Christian life that God intended to be normal for his church is a a new sense of God's holiness and his presence. And the way that we ought to live, we become more excited about living for God in ways we, we begin to be in church, which is God's purpose. I'm writing a book called The 52 and it's among some other things, but the, the 52 weeks of the year, 52 reasons that God says being in church is a priority for the Christian life. And yet so many push it aside. I remember recently we went to a, a prayer conference at Westgate Chapel and, and the pastor was saying at in, in Westgate Chapel that the church was very um, wealthy. They had a lot of people up there and that had summer homes, you know, that they would go to Chelan and, or even in the winter and they would go skiing or they would go out on the water and, and they would go away from church for the weekend. And he began to realize that that's not what church is. Church isn't all those people going away skiing and out on the water every Sunday. Uh, the first day of the week was for the fellowship of believers and the worshiping of the saints together. And, and when we take away from that, that's not something that honors God. And, and we, that's just not me speaking. That's, the word of God. When the psalmist says, I waited patiently on the Lord, he's he's talking about being in a place of intimacy with Christ that spurns on the elements of the Christian life, a living to follow the pattern of God's word and faithfulness and, and maturity. Um, essential be, God's presence is essential. Everything, everything that we that we are pursuing with God is to experience that Revival. Revival is that inrush of the Holy Spirit into my body, threatening to become a spiritual corpse, that I recognize that I need more of his presence. I want to pray for you today that you would be as the psalmist did. You would wait earnestly for the Lord, that you would be in his presence. Again, I want to say, as I said yesterday, the presence of God is the solution for everything. Every financial woe, Every big decision that you have to make, every relational disorder that there is among your family or friends, everything in life, every unsaved person that you love that is in your family or you're connected to, all of those things are solved by being in the presence of God. God is the one who brings a solution. How many times, if you've been in church any length of time at all, you've heard the statement and you've experienced it to be true in yourself if you spend any time at all around the altar is that when we wait on God, all the things of this world seem to just fall away. And we recognize that the solution solely is in the Lord. And so many times we come to that altar and we just pick right back up all of our worries, cares, fears, and woes. And we haul them back out with us when God is calling us to wait on him 
as the psalmist says, wait patiently on him and, and do our due diligence in terms of letting God be first to remove those fears, concerns, because we're going to have trials in this world and we're going to have those issues. But the solution for everything is being in the presence of God. I want to pray for you today. Lord, I pray that every single person, God, that hears this today would be encouraged to just give you time to wait on you, to meditate on your word and and to allow your Holy Spirit, God, to speak. I pray, Lord, that as we take the time and make it a habit more and more often throughout our day, throughout our days and weeks, that you, O oh God, would be exalted in us and begin to show us the life in victory that you've already won. Give us your peace in spite of our circumstances, your provision for our greatest needs, and healing and salvation for those that are close to us. Lord, we also pray for those that are suffering from COVID right now in our church and others outside. We pray, Lord, that you would touch them in their bodies and bring your healing as you are healer. You are God. You are the knitter and the creator of our bodies. You made us the way that we are. So, Lord, have your way. Bless every person today according to your will as we wait on you patiently in Jesus' name. Friends, I hope that you're refreshed today. God bless you.